Welcome to Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, the arena of the supernatural, where supernatural is natural. Our vision is to bring Christ's abundant life, knowledge, and hope to Inanda, then to the whole world, in the form of preaching, teaching, holistic gospel, healing, deliverance, counseling, training, and discipleship. Here we go. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, your past will never define your future. There is always redemption, which means there is always a brighter day. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we do not think that we are better than any other church out there. We are just doing our best to become our best. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we want you to believe in God, but also we want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against any people who do not attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that is pursuing us. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we are committed to serve God and people. We take ownership and account for our decisions, answerable or accountable as for something within one's power. We do what we say we will do. We are learning to serve God with all our hearts and we are learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you are looking for the perfect church, we are not it. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we are part of a global community that is knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we believe that really happened too. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, it's not our church at all, but it is His and we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and fame and not for ours. So there's the invitation. You are invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to Mount Zion Carnation Ministries from Dr. Swanem Somi and Tabisilem Somi. We welcome you in South Africa. Come on, Mount Zion Carnation. Mount Zion Carnation, we welcome our brother in South Africa. Yeah, no, we are so excited. We want to hear. We heard everything when we were in Zambia, ministering to us and everything and the burden and the vision that God has given you. Thanks, God. Prophet Wambagit, Prophet Moy, thank you, Mamazo. Thank you very much. God, uh, I will allow you to introduce our guest. Yes, you're going to do that. And, uh, oh, 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 Pastor. So she is that person who's connecting people around the world. You remember online. This is the person who is preaching even online, changing things. So this is the woman. So without wasting any time. Also, we are live on our local radio station, which is Highway Radio. So they've allowed us to give us this time, so until one o'clock, and uh, we want to hear from you. And uh, let me, Mount Zion Carnation, help me welcome Pastor Moy. <laughs> Pastor Moy! <laughs> this, is, this is the giant, the connector. The bulldozer herself. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, God. Hey, what a humbling introduction. Thank you so much. I'm so humbled. I call them my parents in the ministry. They are my parents. Can you 
give God a big hand of applause. The way they look after me, it's so much humbling. And I always believe in that scripture that says God is not unjust. That he cannot see what you are doing. Even now in this room, God is not unjust. That he can see, he cannot see what you are doing and reward you. There is something that money cannot buy where God rewards you. Because when God rewards you, he rewards you beyond money. He rewards you beyond material things. Sometimes he rewards you with more days in life. Sometimes he rewards you by preventing any accidents around you. It's beyond what money can buy. Whenever you think of these parents, think of what I'm saying right now. The offering that you give and the tithe that you give is far too small as compared to the reward that God gives you the moment you decide to give an offering and support this ministry. May God bless you for that. <laughs> I just want to thank also my sisters, Umafigi. Wave your hand, Umafigi. She's always there. In the midst of the night, anytime. My sister Togo, wave hand where you are. I'm well looked after. Wherever I go, they go with me. Even if in Hamba, they look after me. They check that everything is going okay. Uh, sister Togo, in terms of health, I know that she looks after me in all angles of my health. And do my figi in terms of prayer and look after me in any way. So, God bless you, my sisters. Thank you. I feel like saying one sentence. Nara, nara, le, nare, ke, le, nare, ke, le, mo. Again. Nara, nara, le, nare, ke, le, nare, ke, le, mo. Again. Nara, nara, yeah. Nare, ke, le. Nare, ke, le, mo. That's my song. I welcome Reverend Emmanuel Adimora. Um, I met a, a Reverend Emmanuel Adimora last year where I heard that God has laid a vision in his heart. Uh, 54 nations of Africa in one roof. At first I cried because it was like this, this task is too big for me. Until the Holy Spirit says, go for it, I am with you. You will, you will play a role in this big huge thing. And then from there, the next person to call, obviously, are my parents. I told them that I've got this big task to coordinate in South Africa prominent speakers that will participate in the Africa Unite Conference. The government of Zambia opened the premises of Lusaka for us to host 54 countries in one place, which it did happen. Our Dr. Suane was there with me. And Carnation Church, you were there. You are known now in most uh, African uh, nations that were there. Rwanda knows about you. Amen. Tanzania knows about you. Amen. Ivory Coast knows about you. Amen. Nigeria knows about you. Amen. Lusaka knows about you. Amen. 
Yo, yo, I can count and count and count. It is such an honor uh, for the Lord to take me into the phase. I felt like when working with him, there were times that were very uh, tough. But he said, I'm stretching. I'm stretching your gift. And it entered into a continental level. And I declare that we are going internationally. <laughs> And I cannot go without you. I'll pull you again and say, now I'm global. I have been prophesying that by the end of this year, I will connect globally. And I will sit on the global table concerning the prophetic. So give him a big hand of applause and I hope that you'll be blessed. Thank you so much, Dr. Tapsile. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. Go ahead and give Moy the biggest hand clap you can give to a woman of God. Hallelujah. Please open your mouth and speak in tongues for a moment. Just go ahead and speak in tongues everywhere in this building. Lord, our hearts are open this, this morning. Let the wind of your glory and your presence be released upon this place. Thank you for the anointing, oh God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. We honor you, Lord. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, give the Lord the big hand. Give the Lord the big hand. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, now sit down like a big man in your father's house sit down like a big woman in your father's house very quickly i want to say a very big thank you to um, dr swani listen i have met different men of god around the world and because of my um, type of ministry and travel i'm in touch with several ministers of the gospel but I'm going to submit to every one of you in this amazing church that I have never met any man of God like your pastor. None. I have never met even one. I'm serious. I have never. In my entire life of ministry, I'm on camera and I know what I'm talking about. I choose my words. I've never met a man who is simple, a man who is down to earth, a man who loves people. A man who loves God like your pastor. I celebrate you, Dr. Swane. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, um, Moy was telling you a bit about what happened last week as we gave back to the African United Summit. It's a movement. It's not an event. And, um, of course, we had the vice president of Zambia and a lot of very top people that came to that summit. But I can tell you, the success is, I'm handing over the success to Dr. Swan. I'm giving it back to him. I'm serious. I've never seen this in my entire life and ministry and in my work with God, that a man could be that selfless. I mean, you, you needed to have been in Zambia to see how he, Dr. Swan took the whole thing as do it, it was, oh my God. One more time, give the Lord a clap of him for the man of God. And, um, and, um, and, um, and I also want to celebrate the neck that turns the head in the right direction. I believe that God gives every man the anointing, but gives the woman the influence. Many times, anointed men have been faced with wrong influences. But in this case, I believe that God has given us a mother who has given Dr. Swane to us as a gift. One more time, let's celebrate the woman of God. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. And then this ministry will not be here without you. Celebrate yourself. Go ahead. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. My message will be very short. Very, very short. That's how the Lord would want it. 
you know, but I also want to um, thank Moy so much for her, the, the largeness of her heart to have been able to give me the privilege to be here and also to meet with Dr. Swanee. Praise the Lord. John chapter 14, verse 12. Let's look at it very quickly. John chapter 14, verse number 12. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Thank you, Father. Wonderful, Jesus. Yes, verse 12. Can somebody read? Anybody? Let's be fast. Someone read for us from the King James Version. John chapter 14, verse 12. What does it say? Thank you, Father. John chapter 14, verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Prophesy to the person next to you, you shall do greater works. Tell somebody that, you will do greater works. Go ahead and prophesy to somebody, you shall do greater works. Now, number one, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to know that in the kingdom of God, there are no ambitions. In the kingdom of God, there are no limits. Every limitation you face right now in your life and in your work with God is the limitation that you have placed on yourself. The God that you have has given you the opportunity to beat his records. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I prophesy into your life. After this service, there will be an expansion in your life. I can't hear your amen. There will be an expansion in your business. I can't hear an amen. God is about to do exceedingly. He's about to do abundantly. He's about to do above all that you ask and that you can ever imagine. There are people here today, when we are through with this service, you will shake South Africa. That amen is suffering from COVID-19. I said you will shake South Africa. In the name of Jesus Christ. We live in a generation where God is generating generators. The generation we live in right now is not a generation for storytellers. It's a generation for history makers. Are there history makers in this church in this morning service? Look at me. I believe that life is not measured by duration. Life is measured by donation. It is not how long you live that matters. What matters is your contribution to your generation. The Bible says, if you believe in me, out of your bellies, I said, out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. Out of your bellies shall flow ideas that Bill Gates will look for. Out of your bellies shall flow wisdom that will impact your generation. He says, if you believe in me, and this is Jesus talking to you, that the works that I do shall you also do, and greater works shall you do. Let's look at very quickly the book of um, um, Psalm 71. I want to show you something very quickly. Psalms 71, verse number 21. Psalm 71, verse 21. Thank you, Father. There is nobody that will be small in this ministry. Can I hear your amen? Nobody will be small in this ministry. There will be no local champion in this ministry. I believe in this ministry, we are going to have presidents of nations. In this ministry, we are going to have ministers, parliament members. In this ministry, we are going to have heavy duty businessmen and women. In this ministry, owners of shopping malls. In this ministry, owners of estates. If you are one of them, jump up and shout hallelujah. No local champion in this ministry. Read for me. Yes. Read for me. Let's be fast. Be, be quick. Walk like an army. Psalms, Psalm 71 verse 21. Yes. What does you, it say? You will increase my greatness. You will increase my greatness. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. Look at me. Look at me. If you are afraid to be great in this place, then this service is not for you. 
If your dreams are too small, God did not give it to you. Your ancestors gave it to you. If you carry a small dream and a small vision. Listen, any dream that you carry in life that is easy to accomplish, God did not give it to you. Your ancestors gave it to you. I believe that there are people in this service, when God is through with you, he will give you an idea that will shake this nation. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, thou shall increase my greatness. Thou shall increase my greatness. So my message this morning is seven secrets to greatness. Seven secrets to greatness. It is God's plan to make you great. It is God's plan to make you a household name in your lifetime. It is God's plan to, to use you to, to change the status quo of your generation. But there are seven things that are vital and important if you're going to step into that plan of God to make you great. If you're here today and... Um, your dream is to be a local champion. I did not come for you. I only came for those who are going to be generational changers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? History makers. Look at me. Small minds discuss problems, but great minds discuss solutions. Did you hear what I said? That means, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, hear me very well in life. Hear me very well. The size of your world will be determined by the size of your mind. And the size of your mind will be determined by the quality of information inside that mind. So the difference between you and Billy Graham, the difference between you and Nelson Mandela, the difference between you and Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, is not the color of your skin, it's the capacity of your mind. If you build your mind, your mind will build your future. If you build your mind, your mind will build your business. If you build your mind, it will build the outcome of your life. So no one here should carry a small mindset, a, a grasshopper mentality that says, though there are giants in the land, no, that, that, that said to Moses, like the, like the ten spies, Moses, yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey, but you didn't tell us that there are giants. What were you expecting before? Were you expecting that it's going to be a walk in the park? That's the reason why many people are where they are. The worst thing that will happen to you in life is to find yourself in a position of inactivity because you're afraid of the giants. No, there are Joshua's and Caleb's that will come out of this service today who will say, though there will be giants in the land, we shall take over the land. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I believe God, my brothers and my sisters, and this is a prophetic word for you today. COVID 2025 cannot stop what God wants to do in your life. You didn't say a louder amen. COVID 2030, in case it was 30, 2030, it is too small to stop you. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said it's too small to stop your rising. When men put a full stop in your life, God will put a comma under it. When men feel that all hope is lost for you, when men think that you are finished, God said, I'm just starting with you. He puts a comma under their full stop. It becomes a semicolon. And when there is a semicolon, it's an indication that a new sentence is about to be made. Hear me today. Those who have looked down on you, they will come and look up to you. If you shout a louder, amen, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. It's too early for the devil to rejoice. For all things work together for good. To them that love the Lord. And to them that are called according to his purpose. Listen to me. The devil will pay seven times for what he did during the COVID-19. Seven times. And I hear the word from God saying restoration is coming to your life. If you shout hallelujah, restoration is coming to your business. 
if you shout hallelujah restoration is coming to your dreams if you shout hallelujah restoration is coming to your career number one because of time secrets of greatness but let me take it from this portion of the scripture first Samuel chapter 16 read for me verse 14 my dearest reader first Samuel chapter 16 verse number 14 I'll show you seven things that if you know them and you do them there is no system that will stop you from being great there is no power hatched out of hell that will make you remain small or make your business remain small I don't know who I'm talking to today but God said I should tell you that when others sit you will stand when they stand you will stand out when they stand out you will be outstanding when they are outstanding God will make you a standard that means you will be ahead of your equals you will be ahead of your mates you will be ahead of your, of your colleagues read for me quickly First Samuel what does he say 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. Yes. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Yes. And a distressing spirit from the Lord yes. troubled him. Yes. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Yes. Let our master now command your servants, who are you, who are before you, to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the That's harp. Right. On the line, skillful. Yes. And it shall be that he will play it, and with his hand, when the distressing spirit from, the, from God is upon you, yes. and you shall be well. Number one secret from that portion of the Bible, if you ever want to be great in your lifetime, is that you have to be skillful and competent in your area of oppression. Write it down. If you ever want to rise to the top, you must desire, you must pay the price best at what you do you must you must be determined to become number one you must be determined to become the light at whatever you do in life ladies and gentlemen your value and your placement in the marketplace will not be determined by your religious beliefs it will determine by your skills it will determine by your competencies don't let any man talk you out of the fact that you need to work on your life. Look at me. Nobody is your problem. You are your greatest wahala. Nobody is the reason why you are where you are. You are the reason why you are where you are. That thing you see in front of the mirror every day is your biggest problem in life. Don't live your life to impress anybody. Live your life to express yourself. There are treasures God has put inside of you. Sharpen them. Work on your life. Develop yourself. Develop your mind. Learn how to empty your pocket into your brain and your pocket will never run dry. People spend more money on their cars than they spend on their mind. That is why their cars are running faster than their mind. There are women who spend more money on their wivon than they spend on their mind. That is why their wivon is faster than their mind. Look at me. Let me shock you with life. There is a principle and a secret of life. Listen. If your body goes ahead of your mind, it's a matter of time. Your mind will bring it back to where it belongs. It will bring it back to where you are. Don't be, don't be haphazard with life. Be an excellent person. Excellence commands global attention. Excellence commands attention to your life and to your business and to the works of your hands. The Bible says you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. You are like a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So the second place is not your portion. You are supposed to be number one. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
train your mind. Develop your capacities. Develop your, your, your abilities. Don't compete with any man. Compete with yourself. Those who are complete in Christ do not compete with men. You are complete in Christ. Don't compete with anybody. Say to yourself, beat yourself. Tell yourself, beat your yesterday's record. Paul said, one of the things I do is that I forget the past. And I press on to the prize of a higher calling. Can I speak into somebody's life? Your future shall be bright. Let me hear a louder amen. I say your tomorrow shall be glorious. Let me hear a louder amen. I say there's a great future ahead of you. But it's your skills that will take you there. Number two, secrets to greatness is what I call having the right connections and the right recommendations. After you have trained yourself, after you have developed your skills, you need the right connections. You need the right recommendations. No matter how skillful you are. And that is why many people are where they are in life. Because God has not, God has not given them destiny helpers. Who have identified their potentials. And identified their skills. But that is why we are here this morning. That as you leave this place, your destiny helpers will look at you. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen somebody? Amen. Can I hear a better amen somebody? Amen. The king was troubled by an evil spirit. And the Bible says he sent his servants to go and find him a man who is skillful with the harp. That means, ladies and gentlemen, in life, it's not enough to be talented. In life, it's not enough to be skillful. You also need God to give you what I call relationship currency. People who will believe in you. People who will invest in you. People who will recommend you to the king. People who will be able to say, I know somebody who can get the job done. Listen, there's a difference between abilities and perception. There are two different things. It's one thing to have great abilities. It's another thing for you to have people who will perceive that you carry the ability to get the job done. If you have the ability and I have a wrong perception towards you, I cannot give you the money to do the job. So I pray for everyone as you lift up your hands today. God will send people who will have the right perception about your destiny. The right perception about your gift. The right perception about your talents. Amen. You need somebody to mention your name. You need somebody to talk about you. I said this. There are people in your life who even though they know that you are gifted and that you can get the job done they have refused to talk about it. I call them unfriendly friends. God is going to separate you from such people this year. Somebody shout hallelujah. God will remove such people from your life. They are so afraid. They are so intimidated that if we recommend him, he's probably going to be higher than us. But God is going to send mysterious angels who will advertise your life, who will advertise your dreams, who will advertise your abilities. And that anointing is going to come upon you this morning. Amen. This is not a service for too much talking. It's a service for impartation. Amen. 